Hello everyone. In this video, we will discuss the natural response of a series RLC circuit. Recall that in the natural response, there is no external DC source and it is the nature of the circuit itself, the capacitor, inductor and resistor that determine the circuit behavior. The natural response of a series RLC circuit involves three different cases. In this video, I will show you that instead of doing calculations by hand, how can we use Mathematica and Python to automatically calculate the theoretical results and compare with simulations using LTSpice or Python? This helps to develop a deeper understanding of the natural response of series RLC circuits. The natural response of series RLC circuits is best analyzed using Laplace transform circuit analysis technique. The introduction to Laplace transform and how to use Mathematica to calculate Laplace transforms is provided in another video in this channel. The link to that video is provided at the end of this video. Note that the circuit models for the capacitor and inductor in the S domain easily accommodate the cases where capacitor and inductor have initial voltage or current respectively. This is very important for analyzing the natural response of series RLC circuits. Let us look at how the circuit works. The capacitor has an initial voltage. The circuit used to charge the capacitor is not shown here. When the capacitor is connected to this circuit, it begins to lose its stored energy and eventually the voltage across the capacitor will go to zero. Recall that capacitor and inductor are both energy storage elements. Thus, as the capacitor discharges, it is possible for the energy to bounce back and forth between the inductor and capacitor. In this circuit, we are interested in the current, the voltage across the resistor R, and the voltage across the capacitor, and how these variables approach their final zero values. Next, let us look at the natural response parameters of the series RLC circuit, which help to describe the response. The NEPA frequency depends on the resistor and inductor values only. The resonant frequency depends on the inductor and capacitor values only. The damping coefficient is the ratio of the NEPA and the resonant frequencies. For the series RLC circuit, it is well known that the characteristic equation takes the form shown here. This is a quadratic equation and its roots can be expressed in terms of the NEPR and resonant frequencies as shown. The damping coefficient determines the type of response. If zeta is greater than 1, we have an overdamped response. In this case, the roots are real and unequal. The expression for the current has this general form where A1 and A2 are some constants and S1 and S2 are the roots of the characteristic equation. If zeta is equal to 1, then we have a critically damped response. In this case, the roots are real and equal, and the expression for the current has this general form. If zeta is less than 1, then we have an underdamped response. In this case, the roots will be complex. For the underdamped case, we define a damping frequency omega d 
and the expression for the current has this general form. Note that the constants are determined using the initial conditions and this detail is commonly available in first year textbooks. The labeling of the constants A1, A2, B1, B2, D1, D2 is arbitrary. We can use any symbols. Here we have avoided using symbols C1 and C2 to avoid any confusion with the capacitor which is also labeled C. Knowing these general expressions of the response is useful for sanity checking when we will use Mathematica to calculate the expressions. The damping coefficient affects the way the current and voltage variables reach their final zero values. In these plots, the voltage across the capacitor is shown in red and the current in blue. When the circuit is over damped, the variables reach their final zero value in a sluggish manner. When the circuit is critically damped, the response is on the verge of oscillation. When the circuit is under damped, the response oscillates before approaching zero. And this oscillation is due to the energy bouncing back and forth between the inductor and capacitor. It is quite instructive to compare the natural and the step response of a series RLC circuit. The definitions of the key parameters is the same. In the natural response, there is no external source and the response is determined by natural response parameters only. Here, we are interested in how the variables approach their final zero value. In the step response, there is an external source which determines the final voltage across the capacitor. The response is determined by both the natural response parameters and the external source. Please pause the video now if you wish to reflect on this comparison before moving on. Let us look at how to theoretically determine the natural response. We consider an RLC circuit with 0.25 farad capacitor, one Henry inductor and one Ohm resistor. The capacitor has an initial voltage of 10 volts. This means that the energy stored in the capacitor is 12.5 joules. We transform this time domain circuit into the S domain. Our goal is to write the circuit equations in the S domain, but not to solve them since we will use Mathematica to do the calculations for us. In the S domain, the polarity and magnitude of the initial voltage across the capacitor is captured by this DC voltage source. We assume a clockwise reference current direction. For the impedances, the end where the reference current enters is marked positive and the end where the reference current leaves is marked negative. Applying Kirchhoff voltage law and passive sign convention, we can obtain this circuit equation shown here. Note that the first term is negative since we are going from minus to plus and the remaining terms are positive since we are going from plus to minus for all the terms. This equation can be rearranged into the form shown here. The voltage across the resistor is simply the resistance times the current. The voltage across the capacitor is given by this expression shown here. This is the complete Mathematica code 
To solve for the natural response of a series RLC circuit, we define the input and the natural response parameters. Note that capital I and capital C are protected symbols in Mathematica. Hence, I have used similar looking but different symbols for the capacitor and the current variables. We can program the circuit equation into Mathematica and let it give us the S domain and the time domain solutions. We can evaluate this uh, notebook. For R is equal to 1, we can see that the circuit is under damped. We can see the S domain and the time domain solutions for the current, the voltage across the resistor and the voltage across the capacitor. And we can see that for the underdamped circuit, we get oscillations. We can change the value of R and see the effect. For instance, if we set R is equal to 4 and reevaluate the notebook, for R is equal to 4, the circuit is now critically damped and we get the S domain and time domain solutions in closed form and we can see that the response just decays to zero. This is really cool that we can automate all the calculations and we do not have to do tedious calculations by hand. The complete Mathematica code is available in the comments section below. Let us confirm the theoretical plots by simulating the circuit in LTSpice. This is the RLC circuit in LTSpice. We can define the initial voltage across the capacitor. We are using a voltage control switch which is being set to close at 1 microsecond. When we run the simulation, we can look at the voltage across the capacitor and the voltage across the resistor. This simulated response is the same as what we obtained using Mathematica. We can also simulate the circuit in Python. Using descriptive node lab labeling, we can transform the circuit into a netlist. Using the commands shown here, we can define the initial voltage across the capacitor. Please pause the video now if you wish to study this netlist in more detail. This is the complete Python code to simulate the natural response of a series RLC circuit. We have the standard declarations at the top, followed by the circuit netlist. I am using engineering uh, number notation package, which you may need to install in order to run the code. The advantage of Python is that we can do simulation and theoretical calculations side by side. For the theoretical calculations in Python, we are not taking the Laplace transform approach as in Mathematica. Instead, we are calculating the values of the initial conditions and then substituting into the theoretical expressions. When we run this code, we can obtain the results. We can see that for R is equal to 1, uh, the response is under damped and exhibits oscillations. For the voltage across the resistor, the theory and simulation results match perfectly. The complete Python code is also available in the video comments below. 
In this video, we have explored the natural response of a series RLC circuit. We have discussed how to use Mathematica and Python to solve and simulate such circuits. I hope the video is helpful to your learning. Thank you for watching the video.